It was Cracky Man. It's your homeboy, Little Rob. Make sure you come check me out on Bootleg Kev Podcast. Orale. See you there, man. All right, yo, man. Bootleg Kev Podcast. Bootleg Kev Show. Special guest here. A legend. Lil Rob is here. Welcome, oh, thank you, sir. big dog. Thank you, man. Nice chilling. What's going doing? on, man? Uh, just working on some new music, man. Got a new album coming out November 3rd, man. On to the bueno. So just... Uh, Started to come out here and uh, hang out with you, man, and, uh, and talk about it, man. Yeah, Thank it's you. it's crazy because uh-huh. like uh, you, we were just talking a little bit. You guys, like I, you know, I, I I talk to Bash a lot, and he's like, I'm busier now than I've been my whole career. Yeah, like you guys, I feel like every weekend I see you guys doing like three yeah, or four man. shows together. Yeah, and I feel that too, man. Uh, even me, I'm more busy this time than I ever was before too, and uh, it's just different this time, and uh, I appreciate it more. So I like going out there and making the people happy and everything. So uh, it's been a really good time, man. So yeah, me, Bash, and Magic been doing these shows for the past like four years, and uh, and just rocking it, man. You know what I mean? What do you What do you yeah. attribute to that? Do you think it's like people? Because I I think like music is kind of in a weird place where like, you know, we don't have a perfect example. Like a lot of tours this past summer got canceled, but the ones that didn't get canceled were like Fifty Cent's tour and Wiz Khalifa and Snoop's tour. I feel like for whatever reason, like if you're coming from a certain era, like the fans I like, kind of miss that shit because the current music is you know it's a little it's a little microwavable yeah. if you will. Yeah. I mean I like a little bit of everything, man, but uh you know who would have thought that back in the days we would write that kind of music that would last, you know, as long as it has, man, and hopefully it lasts forever, you know what I mean? Um but um to be a part of that is is really really dope and and the fact that me and Fingers wrote a song called Summer Nights that kind of blew the hell up and uh and uh, yeah, and that's what I've been uh, surviving off for a long time. Big dog, it's been good. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yo, when you wrote the line right next to the Pacific to be specific, mm-hmm. it's one of the hardest lines ever. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's I, like, I know, it's, I know it's this, like the quintessential little Rob line. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've heard people make fun of it sometimes, man. Like, oh, why not? You put those rhymes together. How do you do shit, that? I say right? that shit but, all the time. But hey, man, you know, I used to live right there by the uh, by the Pacific to be specific. So that's why, man. Everything was written in Nana's kitchen right there in uh, in my town. So, yo, it's cra- off on the beach. I was gonna say you kind of like when I think of San Diego. I mean, obviously, recently there's been some dope dudes out of San Diego, but I think of you. I think of Jail Felony. I kind of oh, think okay. you guys are kind of like the yeah, yeah the San Diego guys. For you, like you've been carrying that San Diego flag for so long. Like, why do you think like um, San Diego still hasn't really popped yet in terms of like mainstream hip hop? Uh, I mean, I don't really, I don't really pay attention to like what's really going on, like or right. why, why it don't hit. I mean, I guess if you just have a, a hit record, then it's just gonna, it's just gonna happen. You know what I mean? Like even me, like Summer Nights, I couldn't even stop it. I didn't try to write a hit record, but it just kind of happened that way. And I think that's, you know, whatever the people are digging at the time, I guess, you know, a lot of luck, I guess, too, you know. Hey, everything. Yeah, <laughs> now, there's you a know, lot of luck involved. With right this time, shit. right place, right people, and all that, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was going to ask you, for you, like, seeing kind of, when you guys first came out, I feel like there was, like, the lowrider circuit. Obviously, radio supported you guys. Um, there was kind of, like, this, like, very small collective of, like, Latin art or Mexican artists doing hip-hop. Um, now, I feel like it's gotten so big to where, like, you know, I never, ever thought that I would, like, see, like, a guy like Peso Pluma. Oh, yeah, yeah, doing yeah. like the VMAs, right? Yeah, that's dope, dope. Or a guy like, are you uh, hip to that Mexican OT? Oh yeah, he's dope too. Man. Super I, dope. I, like, I, I, like I, I feel I like don't know too many of his jams or nothing like that. Right. But uh, but, uh, but when I have come across him and hear him spit, I wait though, wait though. Yeah, it just feels like the the like Mexican um, space in hip hop, and obviously I don't want to call Peso Pluma hip hop because he's not. But the Mexican space in hip hop has grown to be like so so big. Like there's so many like yeah. independent artists, artists getting signed to major labels, like. Um, and you guys are kind of like the forefathers of a lot of that shit. You know what I'm well, saying? I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure people were rapping everywhere. You know what I mean? Like right. In San Diego and L. A. and you know Texas. Why well, just mean like in terms you know, of like there being like a real like recognition of yeah, like what guys now are we're doing. able to see it with uh, mm-hmm. with the social media and everything. You know, because back when I came up, it was uh, you know proper dose. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, there was Mexican um, power, Latin Brown, Aztec Tribe, uh, you know, Spanish Fly from the Harbor area that I would bump. And then there was like shows like Pocos Peros Locos who would like that you know came out that, later a little bit later yeah right you would have to like listen like Sunday nights in Phoenix yeah, and you'd be Sunday able to nights. like kind of discover all these artists but yeah, yeah. I just feel like now it's like it's like so big like you know what I'm saying like yeah. in terms of just the if, it feels like there's a real movement like for you do you like are you somebody who's gotten to the point in your career where you're looking to like sign any artists or you just kind of 
Working on your own uh, shit, I just, traveling. I kind of know who, the, who I was when I signed with the label, you know, and what kind of a headache I was to them, you know, by not showing up to shows and doing, you know, they would set up shows and everything, and I would have to, you know, go. But sometimes I wouldn't even show up for just one go or call them that same morning and say I'm not going to make it after there's been promotion going on for that show and everything, you know what I mean? Too much partying? Uh, nah, just not really wanting to get, get on the road, man. It wasn't really like a thing to me, you know what I mean? Right. A lot, of, a lot of bullshit at the pad, too, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So I just wouldn't end up going and, and really enjoying everything, man. So, But nowadays, it's way different. Is that you know why you mean? said you appreciate it more this time? I appreciate it a lot more now. You know what I mean? And it's not for the money. It's not for the likes. It's not for anything like that. Like this new album, man, I'm just coming back for the fuck of it. Eh? You know what I mean? Because I've been doing shows for a long time with Magic and Bash, and, and we've been selling them out, man. So they're there to check us out, man. And they'd be asking me, when's the new music coming? And I never have an answer for them, so... But now, now I do, man. Any features on the new album? <laughs> no, nah, just on me, man. That's dope. On Working me. with Fingers just, again? Just because, yeah. Yeah, 11 songs with Fingers. We have one jam on there that might not make it, man. This one is probably my favorite one on the jam, but uh, on the thing, but the, trying to clear the sample, man, and getting back at us. So we got to clear that sample, man. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's tough. <They'll, laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. But, so, um, so your favorite song in the album might not make it because of a sample clearance. One of, yeah, one of my favorites is really like you know like re repping and shit. You know what I mean? Do you know what? Yeah. Can you tell tell us what sample it is? I uh, you know what man? I can't even think offhand which it is. It's a, it's a hard to find oldie. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, oh, they're hitting you for sure. They they yeah, get in your pocket. It's a hard to find one. Not even getting back at us. I say. Oh, they're not even getting back at you. <laughs> no, nah, we're waiting. We're waiting for a. I say you just let it fly. For an answer, you know what I mean. Sometimes so, you got to just let the sample fly. Yeah. We'll see what happens. You know, there's a guy <laughs> named, uh, there's a dude I know named Static Selecta who's a big hip hop producer and he puts out albums. And uh, I always ask him because he's independent and all his beats are sampled. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, dude, you must have a hard time. And he's like, no. Well, that's like that's like me too with uh, everyone saying my, their favorite album is Crazy Life. Where we were sampling everything that I can get my hands on with break beats. And right. And that's why I, he's like, it, dude, you know? we just drop it. And like, if uh, we hear about it, it means the music's doing well. Yeah, yeah. That's it, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So you clear it later. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Um, talk about, uh, for you, man, how dope has it kind of been to, like, when? because I feel like when you, when I got into radio in 2005, and I think the first time I might have saw you live was maybe like 06 or 07, but I was like working at a radio station in Phoenix when neighborhood music like popped off. Like that shit was like a real wave. It was like yeah. that, you had... The song Neighborhood Music. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was 2004, yeah. You had uh, Bring Out the Freak in You. I'm trying to think of all your radio singles that we played. Those are the ones that come to my mind. Yeah. But Barely Getting By, they got on the radio. Barely Bottom Getting By was dope. Okay, cool. For sure, yeah. for sure. And then obviously Summer Nights is Summer Nights. But um, at that same time, Magic had Sexy Lady and obviously NB Riders had what they were doing. Is it dope to kind of be able to like, like, be side by side with a guy like Magic and be like, look how far we've come. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh like, yeah, yeah. We go way back too, man. We met in San Diego because uh, I believe he wanted to sign me at one point or something like that. There's, he wanted to sign you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And then work together and stuff. And the, but I ended up working with the same label, and we ended up was uh, that upstairs? Putting things out. Yeah, upstairs records. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So, they had. I mean, upstairs records had everybody. So then we, uh, you know, I would go out to. Uh, I went to Phoenix to work with with uh, Magic, and we did uh, California. Mm -hmm. And city everyone knows. Um, so yeah, we worked together from the get go. And then obviously, even like a guy like Baby Bash, who's kind of turned into everyone's favorite, like high uncle. Yeah, 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 <laughs> for sure, man. I was just saying, man. I was on the way here. I was running a little bit late, and I was stressing out a little bit, so I, I started puffing on a joint that uh, the Bash's uh, team gave me. So um, that Cherry Wave. So yeah, shout out to Bash. Yeah, for that Bash one, yeah. passes you weed. You gotta. You just gotta make sure you know. Oh yeah. Yeah, you, I don't smoke you, like that. I you got a, a few. Bit, you got a like few that, hours man. to yourself, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure, dog, for sure. So you're high right now. Uh, it's a little bit. A little bit. I feel good. You have to a couple puffs, and that's it. What's your biggest market <laughs> these days? Like, what do you know is like that one market? Like, no matter what, they're showing out for you. Well, I say I would say Los Angeles, man, and it's so big too. Where you got you could do a show over here and over here and over there. And you're, yeah, you could do like you're still rocking. There's man. so many little areas of LA. Yeah, yeah, so for it's a sure. Big market for me, man. So even that with you know hooking up with the Stevan for this video and everything, almost like showing love to. To LA too, you know. Um, yeah, of course, he's a legend. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. And uh, you know, talking about getting stuck like uh, like uh, like it's a Friday, in, you know, in traffic in LA, you know what I mean? And um, you don't want to get stuck in life. Like Did he that, direct you know? the new video? Oh uh, yeah, he directed the new video. Yeah. Did you watch his uh, Netflix documentary that they yeah, did about yeah, him in cartoon? Yeah, that shit sure. was sick. Yeah, dope, dope, dope. Yeah. Yeah, cartoon did these for me, man. The twelve. He did the twelve eighteen. Yeah. 
That's great. How much yeah. was that? What, did he hit, did he hit you like peak Mr. Cartoon prices for those? Uh, I don't remember, man. I think we were just fucking chilling and listening to some oldies and having a couple beers. I feel like back then, <laughs> Mr. Cartoon could have charged anything for a tattoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah Rappers yeah, would have been like. Yeah, no, I think, he hooked, <laughs> I think he hooked me up pretty nicely, man. It was, it was dope. Thank you. Shout out to Cartoon, man. What's up? Shout out to Mr. Cartoon. Yeah, man. yeah, been a minute. Yeah, been a minute for sure. For sure. Um, and then I shot the uh, the cover for uh, Neighborhood Music. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, I shot that. So that's back in 2004, man. Wow. So we go way back too, you know. Way back. Are you aware that like people kind of look at you as like kind of like the the Jay Z of Chicano rap? Do you like understand that like that's like because whenever uh, we think about Chicano rap, like you are the god of it, man. Yeah. No, nah, I mean I, I hear it, man. But you know, I just just always just like going to the studio and, and uh, doing my thing, man. So that part doesn't really. Doesn't really the uh, noise and all the like extra shit doesn't really come across your radar. Not really, man. I mean, it does. It comes across my radar, but I, I don't really like. It's kind of like deflected, kind of like a little bit because it doesn't make doesn't do me. I don't know. I got no opinion on it. You know. <laughs> yeah, man. It's a trip though. But right. I don't look at myself like that, and I just kind of like. And I think maybe that's why the people dig what I'm doing. I don't know. It just kind of works. Right. I always wonder, coming from San Diego, there is kind of like a weird like rivalry between San Diego and L.A. Uh huh. But and and same thing with Phoenix. Like Phoenix and LA has this big rivalry, especially when it comes to sports. But like, uh, LA is like always embraced you, always embraced Magic in such a crazy way. For you, like, was it a little harder for you to be a guy from San Diego and break like up top in in LA, or or was it like pretty easy just because of what you were doing? Yeah, I think it was pretty easy just because of what I was doing. You know. Yeah. But uh, a big part of me when I first started was uh, and big shout out to Spanish Fly from the Harbor area. Mm -hmm. I would listen to them, man, and uh, and uh, always dug what they were doing with the oldie samples and everything. Uh, so I mean, that's kind of like where I started as. So you know, big shout out to LA. I was listening to LA music already too. You know. Yeah. But this is way back in the like ninety ninety. That like ninety or something like that. When the Chargers moved to LA, are you still like a Charger fan? No, nah, I pretty much stopped watching football, man. You were just like, yeah. A, when it's it was over. San, when it was San Diego Chargers, that was one thing, you know. God, that's Los Angeles suck. Chargers, then you got you know you got other teams that are Los Angeles. They don't need. I'd just teams, be so heartbroken. Know? I couldn't imagine like my football team leaving to like a different city. Yeah, well, luckily I wasn't into it that much to be like heartbroken. Right, right, right. right. Okay, that's like, fair. It's just like whatever. So now, now I just uh, yeah, I don't you really watch football too much. Just, There's you know, the Padres. You got the Padres, man. Yeah. What, who has the best Mexican food, San Diego or uh, L.A.? Yo, we got to stop the interview again and tell you about our folks at Odd Socks, baby. That's right. Shout out to Odd Socks, man. The most comfortable socks in the world. They've been riding with us since day one. Um, and let me tell you something, man. Christmas time is, is really sneaking up. Um, OddSocksOfficial.com. Use the promo code bootleg. Save 20% off at checkout. They got the crazy licenses. Check out these Naruto socks. Fucking fire. Little SpongeBob socks. You know what I'm saying? How about this? How about the How High Movie Socks? They got the WWE. They got the motherfucking Cheeto Socks. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the motherfucking Cheeto Socks. They just dropped their Monopoly line, too. I'm waiting for them to send them to me. Ahmad, send me the Monopoly shit, buddy. All right? Also, the Odd Socks Basics. These are my favorites. They're just normal, just, you know. The most comfortable socks you've ever put on your feet is really what they are. Uh, get them black, white, red, fucking tie-dye, whatever you're into. And they got the underwear, baby. Little Reese's boys. Let's go. Oddsocksofficial.com. Use the promo code BOOTLEG. They got South Park underwear, too. All the licenses, WWE, Scarface, Breaking Bad, South Park, Power Rangers, Monopoly, Coca-Cola. They got it all. Use uh, that promo code BOOTLEG and save 20% off at checkout. Also, want to give a shout-out to our sponsor. Uh, much love to our good folks. At Blue Chew. That's right. We talk about it all the time on the podcast. When you go to BlueChew.com right now, you can get your first month for free. A lot of people ask, well, what is Blue Chew and does it work? Well, Blue Chew, it has the same active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis. The only difference is you don't have to go to the doctor. It's all online. You go to BlueChew.com, you get your shit handled over there, and then they get you handled by sending you a month for free when you use the promo code BOOTLEG. BlueChew.com, promo code bootleg. Try out Blue Chew. It'll have your uh, your dick harder than it's ever been. It's like trigonometry in high school, real hard. You know, if you're dealing with any sort of erectile dysfunction, uh, Blue Chew will have you right. Like I said, same active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis minus the awkward doctor's appointment. Everything's online. And if you're asking, well, I don't know, man. I just don't know. Try it out for free for a month. 
They'll send you a month's supply for free right to your doorstep in discreet packaging. Blue chewable form. It's in a little, it's a little chewable, man. You take that thing down and then you go to Pound Town. Take your shorty to Pound Town, goddammit. Bluechew.com. Use that promo code Bootleg. Try it for free for a month. Let's get back to the interview. I don't know, but I'm like a taco shop type of dude, like the San Diego taco shops, you know? Yeah. I, t- I say <laughs> it's, I always tell everybody the best Mexican food. I always look at proximity to the border. Yeah. San Diego's got the best Mexican food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my opinion, I don't think it's close. And then it's LA. In other places, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that was. I that always too, say right? San Diego's number one, though. Yeah, I would say that too. But I, like I said, but I never, I never ate it everywhere. You know what I mean? So I don't know. You know, if I didn't hit the right place in LA or something like that, you know. Yeah, I'm just like can't the, blame all LA or something. You know. And the best food I've ever eaten is in Tijuana. Tijuana has the best fucking seafood I've ever had in my life. Uh, get it, man. Do you ever it's like? Do you make it over there to get like? Uh, I haven't been over there for a long time, dude. Yeah, I used to go to TJ when I was like 16. Yeah, I go. I don't, I don't have health insurance. So I'll go over there and get like, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, see yeah. the dentist. Yeah, but I used to go down there, man, when my first uh, record came out, Over the Night in the 619 and, and Mexican Gangster. That was in 92, and I was out there uh, outside of El Torito Pub and, you know, passing out my, my records back then. Dude, I was Damn. 16 years old. 16 years old in TJ, yeah. passing out your, your, yeah. your CD. Yeah, my brother and them went up, uh, went up into the show because uh, there was, uh, I don't know, if, I forgot who was uh, performing that night. I think it was Kid Frost. and. I don't know. I don't know who it was, but they all went in. And, but I was too young; they wouldn't let me That's in. But crazy. I was out there passing out my albums, man. Damn! So your first album was '92. My first. Uh, it's a single, but just the over the night uh, first two songs. Yeah. So yeah. first time you actually released Recorded any music. And released anything? Yeah. '92, man. Yeah, That's crazy. The cassette tape, yeah, and the record. Longevity, but, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. And you can't, I mean, I couldn't plan for it. It just kind of happened that way, you know? Yeah. But I appreciate it and everything, man. So, and, what would and be like, and everything. You, you said earlier that, you know, you kind of went through your spouts with the not showing up to shows and maybe taking <laughs> yeah. advantage of this shit a little bit. Yeah, 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 exactly. For any young uh, up and coming artists, for, you know, you've obviously kind of made mistakes that, Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. maybe they can learn from. What would be some things you would uh, you yeah. would advise them yeah, to I do? Yeah, I made to mistakes do? that I could learn from, or that I learned from, and people, other people's made mistakes towards me that that I've learned from. Right, you know what I mean. So it's uh, you know, never step on nobody's toes. Don't burn no bridges because you never know, man. Uh, be humble, but either, either you are humble or you're not. You know what I mean. So you can't act like you're humble. You know, uh, it's either you are or you're not. So um, and uh, just never never burn nobody, man, because you just never know, man. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And Never to, burn a bridge. And, it's uh, very yeah, important. Keep the word and everything, man. Always keep the word, you know. And you are uh, you were, you came early today and I was late. So, be, you know, you know and, and we're doing this in the morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, not for sure, man. I was I at Knott's to, Berry Farm I, last night till 2 in the morning, so. Yeah, I just flew in from Vegas last night, you yeah. know. And then went to go eat over here at Mama Party. How, 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 Vegas is always a, a movie. Yeah, that was dope at the House of Blues at yeah. the Mandalay Bay. Was it you, Magic, it uh, Bash, was someone else on Me, like? Magic, Bash, uh, J-Rocks. Uh, Shout out to J-Rock. She's got a beautiful voice. Yeah. Um, I forget. A couple others, but yeah, I forget. Would, Sophia Marie. You guys are doing so many shows together. Have you ever considered doing like a Best of Both Worlds or like a, a West Side Connection type of album? Where it's like you, Bash, and Magic, and maybe it's like 10 no, they songs? We're, they were talking about doing some jams, you know? That would be crazy. Yeah, we did a couple of jams already. Me and me and Magic, and uh, we have one that's coming out on uh, on Magic's album, I guess. Well, you out. guys did a record like three or four years ago with that. Uh, what's that kid's name? Oh, Kuko. Kuko. I was yeah, gonna yeah. say Koku. Shit. Yeah, that but went, that song was fucking raw. Yeah, that went pretty big, man. So I was, I was that surprised. song was that was a beautiful song. Yeah, man. That dude's sick. Yeah. Yeah, he's I got a beautiful voice. And, that, and, that, and that's the thing too, man. I was doing. A, I did something for J Rocks. Did something for Spanish Fly, Aztec Tribe. A little Grifo from San Diego. Um, who else? Uh, uh, Cuatro Prestigio. They one for them, too. Go check it out. That's a good one, man. Uh, to a banda, you know? So shout out to you guys, too, man. Um, but uh, I just got hip to a new dude from San Diego. Have you heard of him? I think his name's Little Weirdo. Uh-huh. Have you heard of him? Uh, I, yeah, I heard of him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty dope. Yeah, he's good. He's good. And then there's... Um, God damn it, I can't think of the kid's name. What's the kid's name from uh, Oceanside that's doing the old school? Oh, Desi Hollow. Desi Hollow. Desi Hollow, too, man. Great guy. Uh, yeah, way cool, man. So I liked what he was doing, so I hit him up. But I've done so many features lately where I thought maybe it was just time to do my own, you know what I mean? Yeah, Desi's dope, man. I like how he's kind of bringing back that, that like G-Funk 
Yeah, just, for sure, man. Yeah. And he's younger. Like, he's like, he's just like paying homage. Like, yeah, yeah, and sure. he's doing it in like a great way. It's and he's like, dope. Yeah. Super dope, for sure. Shout out to Oceanside, man. Yeah, for sure. 760 in the house. Oceanside is like a place you drive through on your way to San Diego, but you don't realize if you just get off the freeway, it's fucking gorgeous. Oh, I'll be driving through tomorrow. What is your chemistry like these days with a guy like Fingers? Because Fingers, for people who don't know, he had a run. Like, Fingers really oh, had yeah, a run. Everyone that goes to Fingers, man, got some good, gets some good jams, man. So I already knew that he was a person that I needed to to go see. You know? So he's mainly handling, is it all the production or a lot of the production on this? Uh, all of it. All of it. All of it, man. That's dope. That's I like that too, like in hip hop where people like lock in with one producer because yeah. I feel like it always makes the albums better. Oh, it needs clean, dude. And it helps me write the, the hooks and everything, man. And uh, I go in there, we knock it out real quick and then it will add his flavor to it and it's, it's all to the good, you know? Yeah. Are you guys yeah. going to, um, are you gonna put it out and just see how the fans react? Are you gonna go to radio with this or like what's what's kind of the plan? Uh, we the got album? a plan going on, man. Which I, you know I wasn't really ready for either, man. Because at first I was just gonna throw it out just for yeah. the people, you know. So now we're here doing uh, you know the podcast thing and just doing little interviews here and there and just uh, doing it because this is what we do, you know what I mean? And um, so yeah, we're gonna put it out. Hopefully the people love it, man. It's bumping. That's dope. Yeah, that's one of my favorite favorite uh, things I put together in a long time. How long did it take you to record? Uh, just three sessions. We did three sessions. They wow. did 11 songs real quick, man. You know? Shit, y'all were quick. Yeah. Well, I get my stuff already ready in my head and everything, so when I go to the studio, I don't You already have the time. beat. You know, it's crazy because the new rappers don't do that no more. They just show up to the studio, they play like 10 beats, and then they start humming, uh... Yeah, They go yeah. in the booth yeah, and they hum. That. I could do that too, but... So you like to I get like the to... beats, have everything ready, so when you get in, we're, we're on business. I'm ready to record. I'm I already record got... record and everything's ready to go, and I put thought into my rhymes and, you know, make sure they're put together when I spin them right and all that. Have so, you, yeah. uh, how many people have Lil Rob tattoos in the world right now? I don't know, but I've seen a couple, man. I'm about to say, I've, I've seen some. Yeah. Yeah. That's got to be. Some is of it, my, my autograph on their, on their skin or whatever, or, uh, or just portraits too. It's pretty true. I was going to say, if someone has a portrait of your face on them and they come up to you, that's got to be cool, but also a little startling. Yeah, no, that's cool. <laughs> well, what, one, one chick wanted me to write on, write on her face. You know what I mean? But I don't want to do that. I would have been like, listen, long, baby, don't do nah, that. you don't want to. Listen, thank <laughs> you. don't you. want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank but, you, but no thanks. But you nah, you don't, you don't want to ruin your life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. You're just walking around with a little rock tattoo <laughs> on your face, going to job interviews and shit, yeah, explaining yeah, it. Yeah, I don't understand. But that's cool, you know? Yeah, like, I I, guess. you guys yeah. don't know little Rob. This is, yeah. Yeah. What what where's the like like the portrait shit's got to be pretty gnarly though like do you like take their information and say hey I'm gonna like get you into the show or or are you just like hey thank you uh that kind of reposted on my story and stuff yeah. like that yeah so but Damn. never really thought about inviting to a show but maybe that's a good idea you know I feel like if someone gets their your face tattooed on them they should get into the show yeah for sure yeah. all right cool. Yo, what up, guys? We got to stop the interview to tell you about our folks at my bookie. It's winning season right now. NFL, we're in the thick of it. I've been doing really good on my NFL bets, by the way. Plus, NBA officially back. We got playoff baseball. It's going crazy, especially if you like to throw down some of that money and do a little gambling. You got to head over to my bookie. Uh, this was dope about my bookie. It doesn't matter if your team sucks. My team, the Cardinals, they're trash. Don't matter. I'm still winning on Sundays, baby. All right, at my bookie. All right, you can use my bookie for your daily odd boosts. Same game parlays. And take advantage of the crazy huge prize pool contest. Plus, right now, my bookie has a no strings attached. That's the important thing. No strings attached cash bonus that lets you deposit and withdraw quick. That's free cash. No strings attached. Deposit, take it out, and then go about your day. Or get in on some of this NFL and NBA action, baby, all right? Just use the promo code BOOTLEG when you sign up. Go to mybookie.ag. Use the promo code BOOTLEG on your first deposit and you'll receive up to $200 in cash. What are we talking about? No strings attached. What? My bookie, use the promo code BOOTLEG, all right? Maybe you want to gamble on some NFL. Maybe you want to get in on some of this early NBA action. Maybe you want to get in on some of this playoff baseball. It's really on you. Use the promo code BOOTLEG and receive up to $200 in cash. That's right. Try my bookie right now. Use that promo code BOOTLEG. And you can grab, um, how about this, man? There's some crazy odds going on. And I like this one because what you can do is you can throw down on a potential Super Bowl front runner and uh, plus 38,000 on the Eagles and Chiefs on the Super Bowl, plus 38,000. If you put $100, you win 38,000. 
thousand dollars, you're not going to get those odds anywhere. MyBookie.ag. Use the promo code Bootleg right now. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. Only with my bookie. Plus, we got to give a big shout out to our family at King Palm. Man, we love King Palm over here on the Bootleg Cap Podcast. This is what's great about King Palm. First of all, it's all about that organic, no tobacco leaf. This thing right here is a boy. Look at that. Sure, sure, sure. That's just a leaf right there. King Palm, they got everything you need, man. They got these cones with the squeeze and pop, terpenes in them, the flavors. This right here is the, uh, the dragon fruit. We got the Grape HD, the Watermelon Wave, so many flavors. What's dope about King Palm, if you're in whatever city you're in, you could find King Palm at your local smoke shop, your local 7-Eleven, all right? I'm telling you, King Palm, you're not going to ever, ever experience a more cleaner, more natural, more just great way to smoke what you're smoking, all right? You stuff one of these boys up with some flour, uh, and, and you just, you're off to the races. I'm telling you, you hit the tip. You get hit with that flavor, and it's, man, it's nothing like it. The squeeze and pop on King Palm is insane, all right? And they got all size cones, all right? So go to King Palm, man. Organic tobacco-free leafs of all sizes. Like, this is a, this is a, this is, look, 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 we're talking about all sizes here. What are we talking about? What are we talking about here, boys? All right? Go to kingpalm.com right now. You go order whatever you want, man. They got accessories. They got trays. They got grinders. They got ashtrays. They got, damn, all kind of flavors of their leaves. Everything. 50% off when you use the promo code bootleg. That's 50% off. Order whatever you want at kingpalm.com. Let's get back to the interview. Yeah, that's pretty gnarly. We'll start that for next year. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you say the name of the new album was? Uh, all to the Bueno, because no matter what, it's all to the Bueno. I like that. Yeah. Uh, coming out when? No- uh, November 3rd. November 3rd. November 3rd. Are you going to do any like uh, hard copies so you can sell them on the road and yeah, stuff? Yeah, we're doing that too. Do the yeah, merch and all sure, that? You got sure, the merch man. together? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, man. Well, it's dope to see you back making new music. Yeah, it's going to be fun, Because you've been on the road just murdering it. How many shows a year are we at right now? <sighs> I don't even pay attention. I'm just never But if you had to guess, weekend, I mean, man. is it like 100 shows a year? I'll just take that. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot, it's a lot dude. dude. It's crazy, man. You From guys here, are... I mean, a lot of West Coast, but then also to New York and uh, and um, New, what, we had, uh, New York and uh, Atlanta and what is a what is? East Coast, I was yeah. gonna say that is interesting because like I, you wouldn't think like a New York show would be big for Little Rob. What are like like the fans like in New York? You know what I mean? Like that's different. Oh, that was a good show too, man. We yeah. packed the house in uh, in the Queens and Queens. That's crazy. sold out show in Queens. It was it was bumping. I'm curious, um, do you, <clears throat> are you hip, like, there's, like, this whole Chicano subculture in Japan? Yeah. Have they ever booked you guys out there? I went out there, what, like, in 2005, I think, with E-Man for Power 106. Shout out to E-Man, yeah, man. Yeah, shout out to E-Man, and um, we did a five-city tour in uh, in Japan. How, how crazy to, was that? And I went to... Uh, they got lowriders and shit out oh, there? Oh, yeah, they're bumping. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some dude, uh, Japanese dude, pulled up, pulled up his shirt on me for it, said Chicano on his... On his stomach, I was pretty crazy. That is kind of yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A Japanese guy with the chicken. Yeah, he looked all gangstered out too, man. You know? <laughs> that shit is crazy. Yeah. Oh, shit. Shout out to, uh, yeah, shout out to that guy, man. He's committed. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure, dog. Hey, yeah, well, I love it. I miss, um, some, you know, there's still like some, some car shows that are pretty big out there. Uh, the Arizona Super Show's big. Shout out to my guy Kenny, who does it every year. But like the peak lowrider tour, was so crazy every year every rapper had their own like booth set up there was like half naked chicks everywhere <laughs> there was the car show girls every i mean it was wild what is like the craziest lowrider show story you got because those things got pretty gnarly and like i mean it in a really good way but it was yeah. it was great yeah well i guess uh i guess uh lowrider show that i had done i guess up in uh san francisco mm. yeah the cops made me put a bulletproof vest on Wow. Yeah, because there was some, some threats going on. and uh, But I had uh, neighborhood music of Summer Nights. And so I went up there to go perform that for them. And then... Uh, you had th- Was the threats just the Southern yeah. California, Northern California yeah, yeah, politics? Yeah, but, but I got no problem with any, anything like right. that. Man. I'm, sure, I'm there to show everybody a good time, man. You know, when, I, when I'm on the stage, I rock a brown bandana, represent brown pride. And, and that means, you know... Like, that means hey, everybody. Man, everybody, man. You no matter I mean? where you're I from. I ain't tripping, you know what I mean? I ain't, I ain't doing that stuff, so... Um, so yeah, just uh, bottles being thrown at me and stuff like that. It was kind of crazy, man. They threw bottles at you. Yeah, they threw some soda on me too. I threw a couple of soda on my hat. My brim was dripping, uh, 
Oh man, different, uh, whatever. But you know, it's not everybody, man. It's just a few people that that might act that way, man. So it's I got I got to show everybody. you this video real quick because this is uh, this was in 2009 in Boise. I was at Wild 101, and this was me and you chugging a beer on <laughs> stage at the Knitting Factory, and I look like a 12 year old because I was a 12 year old. I was 21. Maybe 20. This is us. Hold on. Oh, shit, okay. God oh, damn, get it, dog. <laughs> oh, wow, okay, shit, man. It's going way back. Long time ago. Yeah, damn, man. <laughs> yeah, damn, dude. The Latin Lockdown cool. Tour. Was that Lil Uno? I don't. Was it Latin know. Lockdown tour? I think that was. I like, did one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was like. I'm trying to think who else was on that show. I want to say uh, the Superman guy, Brown Boy, was oh, on that yeah, show. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Shout out to Brown Boy, man. I just ran into him. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen him in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Look, man, you're killing it. I'm glad to see you guys on this on on the road, just showing um artists like it's not all about just streaming. You know what I mean? You, if you right. make real connections with your fans, you can eat forever. Yeah, well, I'm just, yeah, like like I said, I'm just out there having fun, you know what I mean? I'm just uh, proud that they're even wanting to see me still, you know what I mean? Yeah, making timeless music is important because you can uh, you can turn that into, like, long, real longevity. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because a lot of people can't do it, how many, however many shows a year you guys are doing is crazy. Yeah, for a minute, for a minute, honestly, man, I was I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, Magic had hit us up for, uh, to see if we wanted to go do these shows and everything, man. So I said, okay, cool, let's do it. And then um, that's just kind of when it started. But before that, like five years, whatever, I wasn't really doing too much. Yeah, no, shout out to you know? Magic. Magic's a visionary. Um, he's got the... For people who don't know, if you go to um, any MC Magic show, even... Uh, I want to say even when you were performing, he's standing on the side of the stage running the show with his son. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Magic's just standing there. There's the graphics. And like him and his kid are like... Handling everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, for sure. I got the whole family, that's a family affair thing no. going on, man. And, uh, you know, even me lately, I've been taking my son too. He's four years old. He's been rocking summer nights with me. At the oh, shows. that's dope, man. Hey, man. Yeah, I've been taking my family with me. Four? You know, when I can. Yeah, it's four. They man. say, um, I, I think that's, you know, when people say terrible twos, I really think it's terrible fours. Yeah, not, yeah. Because they think they're like little grown ups. Oh, no, yeah, he's, oh, he's a little one, gangster, man. He's yeah, cool. when someone's four, they like, they start, the kids start to think they're like, you know, somebody. So, yeah, I took them out on, on the stage with me at the, uh, at the Long Beach show, mm -hmm. Bobby D show. Shout Bobby D. Yeah, and it was, uh, so I took him out there and had him in my arms. He was three years old, and I put him in my mm -hmm. arms and just, just carrying him out. I did summer nights and everything, man. Then I put him down. He started rocking the mic by himself. That's and I go, dope. okay, let's go, <laughs> man, let's go. So that's, that's way cool, He's man. the real little Rob. Yeah, yeah, little, You're big little Rob. Rob yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now I am, yeah. <laughs> All right, the album's coming out November. Yeah. November 3rd, November man. 3rd. Yeah, yeah, All to the Bueno. All to the Bueno, go check, check it, it out. out. You got a single out it's called Too, Too Much right now. About the battles that be talking too much, and then uh, and then moment in time right now, and uh, right now, right now, tons of shows. You can probably whatever city you're in, especially if you're anywhere near the West Coast. I'm sure you're going to be coming soon. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I'll be I'll be back in Pomona and uh, Los Angeles, I think, in November, I think, and then uh, but uh, yeah, I'll be in Salt Lake City this weekend, man, on Saturday. Shout out to the Mormons, man. Yeah, for sure, man. Choose the right. Yeah, yeah. appreciate you, brother. Right, but, uh, thank you, man. Thank you, man. All right, but, uh, yes, thank sir. you. What's going on, man? I want to shout out to our family, Ahar Dean, for presenting to you another interview. All right? There's another interview coming tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Shout out to Ahar Dean, though, if you're in Las Vegas, man. The number one dispensary in the world. They're our family. They're our brothers. They're our fucking dogs over there, man. We love them. They always are taking care of us, and they'll take care of you. If you go to Ahar Dean in Vegas, let's say you're landing in Vegas. You're going to go watch the Raiders. You're going to go watch a Vegas show, whatever. Get in that taxi. Tell them straight up, take me to Ahar Dean. When you get to Ahar Dean, they will get you hooked up with the craziest uh, just variety and selection of premium cannabis on the planet. And if you tell them you heard about us on the on, on the Bootleg Cab show, you say, hey, uh, Hardeen, I heard about y'all on the Bootleg Cab podcast. They're going to take care of y'all, all right? So go follow them, Hardeen underscore Las Vegas on all social media, and check them out, HardeenLasVegas.com. What's up, Hardeen?